Hi everybody, hope you're staying well. This week's video is on what should my infant or toddler be able to do? Um, I've had a lot of parents and friends over the years that reach out asking what's expected based on certain ages, um, whether it's speech or language, and so I thought that would be a great topic for this week. To start out, um, one big thing is there are pre-linguistic milestones. So a lot of times, um, as a parent, we think of, you know, is my child talking? There's a lot of levels to get there. And the first one, typically for little kids, is vocal play. So that's cooing, that's kind of this back and forth sound play where you make a noise, your child makes a noise back, um, you're holding them pretty close to your face, and, you know, you're almost doing that um, parrot type talking where you're going back and forth with them. The next big one is uh, motor movement imitation. So this is where we get our nursery rhymes. Um, a lot of speech therapists, we do a lot with songs and it may look like we're just playing with your kid, but the hand motions to wheels on the bus, twinkle, twinkle, little star, itsy bitsy spider, happy and you know it, um, patty cake is huge for little kids. Um, but where they sit on your lap or they sit in a chair in front of you or in the high chair and you're practicing that, you know, usually before their mouth can do all the words in the song, their hands are doing the gestures. Um, this is also where some parents teach simple sign. Um, so, you know, that's gone through different phases, baby sign language, baby sign, um, you know, but it allows them to have a way to communicate when their mouth can't form the words yet. So you think of sign for more or please or eat or drink. Um, all done is a big one. You know, a way for them to tell you something besides just screaming or crying. Um, it's kind of music to your ears when they can do something like this. And some kids don't. Um, but again, just being able to move the hands and imitate is the next um, milestone. The next thing we kind of look for, um, again, is just some social referencing. Um, little kids do this at different ages, um, but it's definitely before a year, you know, where they look around and if they're strangers, they look to you to see if they should be scared. If they fall, they look to you to see if they should cry. Um, it shows that they're aware of their surroundings and that they're trying to see how to react. Um, and again, this is kind of where you have a lot of control. Um, you know, not to get into a sidebar, but if you're a parent with a lot of anxiety or depression or something like that, you know, this is where you really want to smile at them. Um, you know, when they fall, you don't necessarily want to rush to them and act like it's a big drama every single time. Um, you might smile and be like, you're fine, get up, you're okay. Um, but again, this is just something where you notice they see you, they know you're around, and they're looking to see how they should act. And then another huge thing that um, many of us have heard of, you know, it is eye contact. Um, a lot of people worry about autism with this, but we do want a kiddo to look us in the eyes. You know, before they're one, um, you're hoping that you get some good eye contact because that's really big for the vocal play we talked about, for hand gestures, um, and then eventually when we lead into speech, you know, eye contact is one of those pre-linguistic milestones that's very important. So if your child is lacking in that, that's somewhere to start. And then the last is attention. Um, in order for a kid to learn speech or language, you know, they have to have attention. They have to be able to sit and turn a few pages of a book or kick a ball back and forth or do a few pieces in a puzzle, draw a few scribbles. Um, but just being able to sit and focus for a little bit, I like to say about their age in minutes. So a one year old would be focusing for about one minute. Um, but again, that's something that we also look at before we get into speech and language, because if attention is fleeting, if they are all over the place, then you're going to have difficulties teaching those commands or getting them to ingrain that information you're giving them. So the first age I wanted to talk about is a 12 month old or one year of age. Um, we have that receptive language, so what they understand. Um, understanding no. So a lot of kids this age, you would think they do get it and they don't get it. Here you're thinking of no more for safety or no more for a danger situation. Um, if you scream no if they're about to run out on the street or no if they're about to touch a hot oven or a pan, um, that they at least hesitate or stop. You know, we say no a lot by accident, typically, um, with cabinets or drawers they shouldn't open or things they shouldn't take out. And at times they might get back into it just being ornery. But again, this is more for safety where you notice them pause. Um, the next thing would be, we call them simple commands, but that's, you know, clap your hands, give me a high five, wave high, wave bye, blow a kiss, um, that they're just starting to pick up on some of these things and imitate them and follow that direction. As far as what they're saying, um, they definitely should be babbling. 
That means you're hearing a lot of words. Um, some speech therapists call it jargon, where they're just putting different sounds together to get that mouth, tongue, and lips to move in different ways, um, just to play with the sounds a bit. Um, as far as true words, you're looking at at least one to two. Some places might say up to 10, um, but that's mama, dada, maybe baby. If they drink a bottle, it might be baba. If you have a pet, it might be trying to say its name or just woof woof or meow, some of the animal sounds. If they love trains or cars, it could be choo choo or vroom vroom. Um, and when things fall, you know, a lot of kids have uh oh down pretty good um, or whoa if you're outside on the swing, we. Some of those, um, those are called exclamations, but they all do count as true words. Um, in addition to that, if you notice, like bubble is always bubba. Again, for them, as long as it's consistent with each repetition when they try and say bubble, you're constantly hearing bubba, bubba, bubba. That is truly a word for them, so you do count that. If your kid doesn't have any of these at this age, if you notice the eye contact is lacking, if you notice um, attention is fleeting, please message me um, or you know reach out to a local speech um, outpatient center or clinic and see about an evaluation. It's so much better to get into speech therapy at a young age than hold off, hold off, hold off. Um, trust your gut. I really am big on that as a parent. Um, you know, if you get a kiddo in here that's young and just needs a little bit of help to catch back up, I think it's so much more beneficial than waiting till they're three and they've missed a lot of milestones. Okay, so the next age we have is an 18 month old or one and a half year old. And so what we're looking at as far as what they understand are some basic body parts. So this is not elbow, shoulder, ankle, things that are challenging um, or more unfamiliar. This is like eyes, nose, mouth, hands, feet, um, that they're just starting to be able to point and show you those items, whether it's on you or themselves. Um, the next would be a one-step command. So instead of just blow a kiss, clap your hands, you know, kiss the baby, throw the ball, give me block. Um, you're saying them in a short phrase that they can understand. If your child's having difficulty with this, um, we're going to get into that in another video. And there are some videos already posted of how to work on those things. The next would be pointing to things that you name in a book. Um, so get the doggy, where's the baby, show me the giraffe, um, and they're starting to point. And then as far as what they're saying, you're looking at about 15 to 20 words. Um, they might leave off the endings of words. So what does that mean? Up would be a, uh, dog would be da, um, baby may just be bay. So they're leaving off those endings. That's called final consonant deletion. At this age, it's still appropriate, but you do want to try and draw their ear to that sound. So when they say uh, you'd repeat up with an emphasis on the P there. The next would be that they're labeling things in books. So they're showing you a baby and saying it, or baba, baby, uh, shoe, things that they know and trying to draw you in with them. Um, sounds that they can say, you're looking at P's, B's, M's, H's, and W's, that those are constant, that they can make it. If at this age a kiddo isn't able to say baby and it's like AA all the time, um, if mommy is constantly nini, you know, just a word and they're having trouble with those M's or the B's or the P's, that would be a good time also. Either message me, reach out to a local speech and hearing clinic, um, just to make sure that they're able to produce the sounds that they should be at that age and that the lips are doing what they should. And then finally is a two-year-old. Um, so what we're looking for as far as what they understand are two-step commands. So get the baby and bring it to me, pick up the block and put it on the table that they're just starting to be able to follow and hear both those parts. And then as far as what they're able to say, you're looking at at least 50 words, which it sounds like a lot, but when you go back to that first slide of exclamations, animal sounds, transportation sounds, you think of colors, animals, it all me mes meshes in there pretty well. Um, if your child is way behind at like 10 words, 15 words, you don't need to be alarmed, but I definitely do encourage you to reach out for a speech therapy consult to try and help them pick up more words. A lot of two-year-olds are also able to say two words. Um, that was on the last slide also, but definitely by two years, they should be able to say, you know, my baby, my baba, me do, all done, eat, you know, just starting to put some of those phrases together. And then as far as sounds on here, it does have K, G, F, T, D, and N. K and G 
can be a later developing sound for some kids, but some kids are able to make it right now. Um, but definitely the T's and the D's and the N's usually you're hearing by this age. And then they're starting to ask everyone's favorite question, why? Everything is why, 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 why? Um, but that's just good that they're starting to try and understand why certain things happen um, and just trying to engage back with you. The last thing I put on here was fluency. Um, some kids at this age start to stutter a little bit. You might hear them doing, I, 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 I want to turn or why, 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 why do we do that? Um, what, 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 what ball? And so you're hearing those repetitions. Um, it can be the initial sound or a whole word. But what you want to watch for um, is just that they're not blocking. So you don't have a big pause where the jaw is open and there's no sound or that they're blinking or looking away or just showing frustration with that. So just look for those things. If all you're hearing is just the repetitions and sounds, don't draw attention to it. Don't try and speed them up. Don't fill it in for them and just give them some nice time. And that's really valuable at this age. And just watch it. But most likely it's just normal developmental, um, a normal development of their speech pattern. I hope this helped. I know it was a little bit long. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post below or message me. Thanks so much.